thanks for watching this Thought for the Day for Tuesday the 14th of April. I'm Daniel, the curate at St John the Evangelist Bromley. And today I'm going to start a mini-series. It's going to be slightly longer than the mini-series I did a couple of weeks ago on prayer because this one is going to be seven things proved by Jesus' resurrection. Seven things proved by Jesus' resurrection. And today we're going to talk about the fact that Jesus' resurrection proves that we have peace with God. And to look at that, we're going to have a look at a bit of John's Gospel. John chapter 20, and we're told it's the evening of the first day of the week, the day that Jesus rose from the dead. John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he, he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Did you notice what Jesus says twice here when he appears to his disciples on the day he rose again? He said, peace be with you. He's declaring to them that they can have peace with God now. His resurrection proves that his death worked and that their sins are now fully forgiven if they trust in him. They have perfect peace with God. And so uh, if we believe in Jesus, we can see his resurrection and know that there is nothing we need to do to get right with God anymore. Jesus has done everything. His resurrection proves uh, that his death worked and we have perfect peace with God. There's no sin getting in the way of our relationship with our heavenly father anymore. But did you also notice that in this, uh, in this passage, Jesus gives his disciples a job to do. All of his followers are sent, sent to preach peace. He says, um, as the father has sent me, I am sending you. As Jesus was sent to the world to testify to the father's love that he was the person who had come to die so that their sins could be forgiven. He's now sending the disciples to carry on that preaching job. And, and this preaching job applies to all Christians, not, not just those who are paid to work for a church. Now, all of us, Jesus is sending with this job to preach peace in his name. And there's a reason why Jesus' disciples need to go preaching. And it's because if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus is saying to his disciples, if you go and tell people about me, and how my resurrection proves that I am the only way you can have peace with God, then when they believe, they will have peace with God too. Their sins will be forgiven. But if you don't go and preach and they don't hear about me, then they can't have peace with God because their sins won't be forgiven if they don't believe in me. And so Jesus is sending his disciples with a necessary job. We all need to go around our communities, uh, around our friends and family. We need to go and preach peace, tell people that they can have their sins perfectly forgiven if they will only trust in Jesus, whose resurrection proves that there is perfect peace with God. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you that Jesus' resurrection proves that his death worked that if we trust in him, we have perfect peace with you. And so, Father, we ask that you would give us all the power by your Holy Spirit to take up this preaching commission he gives to all of his followers. Uh, please, would you send us out into our communities? Uh, give us the boldness to talk about Jesus with our friends and family and our work colleagues. Enable us to preach peace so that we would appoint people to Jesus in whom our, our sins are fully forgiven. We ask it in his name. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you join me again on for our second part of this series on seven things proved by Jesus' resurrection. Take care.